Long ago, the world of Minecraft looked far different from what it looks like today. There once existed a realm where twelve kingdoms ruled the lands in harmony. Each one was given an eye of power which granted wealth, prosperity, and strength. But little did these kings know that these very eyes would be their demise. It twisted their own will, and was bent to the very creature that made them. The dragon that comes from the land known as the End. Chaos would spread throughout. Beasts and creatures from the depths would now rule these lands. The twelve kingdoms would break apart, and those who sat on thrones were now beneath the very lands they built their kingdoms on. What was once known as a peaceful world would become forgotten and become remembered as one full with turmoil and strife as the world grew older. But there is still hope, Traveler. The dragon may seem untouchable, but do not be discouraged. For every mighty attribute it may have, there is always a weakness. Go out and find the eyes of power. They may have been lost, but they have not been destroyed. For this is the key to restoring peace to the world. This video is sponsored by liking and subscribing! Wow! Around 70 hours are put into creating these videos, so it would really mean the world to me if you consider liking and subscribing. You don't have to do it now, but I'm sure if you watch until the end, your mind will be changed. Now, let's get right into it. Day zero, my adventure would begin, and I would choose the miner as my class. I saw a building in the distance, but then a goblin would appear, and I ran faster from that fight than Dylan Danis did against KSI. What's that? You don't know who Dylan Danis is? Ah, don't worry about it. He's not a real fighter. I swear to god, if this is how I die at the start, where's the entrance? Please, I beg. Oh my god. And there was another thing chasing me. I mean, to keep it at buck 50, we're kind of dead. Thankfully, I was not dead. And I mined my way out, took the bed, and thankfully, there were a lot of hay bales I could extract just right outside the building. I got myself some stone tools, looted the chests that were in the area. Out of nowhere, some armored zombies ambushed me. That was another... Oh, they got out, didn't they? I was able to take them out, and... One of the drops was this, like, zombie hand, which I ended up using on the cows. A man's gotta eat, you know? Oh, it's actually hard to hit him. No? Don't be baby zombie 2.0. After finally taking out that goblin, I checked out its camp, but the loot wasn't really that good. However, nearby there was a little hobbit home, which had a furnace in it, so good little starter kit. I crafted myself a stone axe, and made my way to this tower. Thankfully, due to previous experience, I know what's inside of it. What'd I say? This one, this run would have ended right here and right now. Wow. And due to my 200 IQ play, I was rewarded. Alright, nothing is attached. Yes! Thank you! Mythic affix, so I'll, I'll take that. Sounds good. Lucky with a C4, looting 4, okay. And that would be a wrap on day 0. I started by collecting some acacia wood, and wandered about in the deserts where I found another replica of the tower I went inside of the other day, and got the loot that was inside. Whoa, calling Vampiric Iron Axe the God Slayer. Hopefully I don't get nerfed like Christian Vale did in Thor 11 Thunder as the God Slayer. Nope. What the f is that? I was forced early on to go on the good old mining trip, but hey, it had to happen eventually. Mining trip it is. I took out the zombie that dropped me an Ooh. iron helmet, and I began mining away the iron that I saw, plus a lot more loot that no one can complain about. Oh please, diamond acts of violence, need I say more? After looting that chest, I would call it a night in the mines. Day 2, what's a morning without a jump scare? <gasps> I knew I heard something, God. Right to where I was at, there was this huge pocket of a different type of stone I had never seen. Very, very beautiful. And there were a bunch of different ores attached to it, which were actually pretty useful. I crafted myself a shield and found one of those mine shafts that is filled with the loot that anybody would want in this fantasy world. Now that's what I'm talking about. <laughs> I don't know what these are runes though, but I know like a camo- oh my god. I went on deeper in the mines and found more structures and there was this zombie brute that was caged up. So I took it out with ease and in the area there was all this different type of loot. Half the stuff I have no idea what it does. Afterwards, I would call it a night. What is that? Exceptrified ore? Day 3, I found an ore that 
At the moment, I didn't know how useful it would come in the future. I found another caged up zombie brute, and then heard a familiar noise that anyone would smile to. Gobblino. Oh, <gasps> he's returned. Obviously, I had nothing really to trade with him at the moment, but hey. It's good to see a familiar face. Cool part in this world is that there's rewards for some of the quests you complete. So, I got my random reward, and got some coal, emeralds, and some honey bread. I went up to the surface, but before I left this ravine, there was this chest with some nice loot inside of it, and then I returned back to surface level. Because of some of the relics I got, I get some random rewards, and there was a choice reward, and I know, hate me in the comments that I chose 2 diamonds over 10 levels, but hey, I learn later. There was this tower with a hidden basement with meh loot chain mail. Nothing too impressive. I made my way up easily against the mobs that were spawning. And on top, there is a beautiful diamond block waiting for me. With the diamonds I just got, I crafted some leggings and boots and called it a night. A takeout bag. Get some food. Ah, nice. All right. That was fun. Day four, I wandered into the desert where a pack of wolves were after my ass. So it led me to this building where I would meet a companion. Close the door. You want food? I took out the dogs tactically, but I let Ulrich take the final That's an blow. Game changer. Actually, let me see what this guy can do. Oh my gosh, this guy's all right. He's a god. I guess this guy's tagging along. Oh, we keep going north. Ulrich would right away show how much of a god he is when we wandered into the forest where there was a witch's hut. But before I could even find the witch, he took her out. Did he kill her? Fair play. But he didn't stop there, as Cyclops would appear right before a river bay, and that man went in. I need food. This is gonna die. Oh my gosh! Alright, I'll give you food for that. Honestly, you're a legend for that. Soon after, I ran into the tower that has TNT inside of it, and got this bow of quick draw. Self-explanatory as to what its perk is, and got this unbreaking book. After walking for a bit, I ran into this haunted looking place where surprisingly the loot was pretty good sharpness five okay dude okay actually wait well, let's post up in here before it gets too dangerous no traps please please no traps all right this is brilliant okay eventually i made it upstairs where i would go to sleep and store all the crap I don't need. Day five, I had a little inventory dump, and when I went outside, there was this creep waiting for me. Ah. All right, we didn't check out the other. Survive for one hour, let's go. After getting that one hour achievement mark, I continued searching through the graves and kept on getting really good loot that I could even give Yurik some of the goods. I'm not gonna lie, the area felt quite claustrophobic, so I started to chop down some of the trees that were on the little island and clear the little stairway that goes up to the second floor porch. I then crafted some shears and started to clean up the cobwebs that were around the house. I wonder who lived here before? Once again, trying to make up some random lore. Who cares? Stuff I don't care about. Oh, the one hour. What do we get? Coal. A rune of air. Rune of earth. I'm sure there's some benefit to having them. I just don't know what it is. Sugar. I'm just getting the ran random rewards for now. Prismarine crystals. Some very unique miscellaneous type loot. But anyways, I would go to sleep after. Day 6, I made my way downstairs and found a secret basement within the house. Just go down. Oh, I heard a villager. Who goes there? Oh, there's a corpse in here. Cool. And what do we have here? Although this place looks creepy as hell, the loot makes up for it. What about this? Look, the game's the game. And we're winning right now. Netherite helmet, Berserker's Fury. I don't know what that does. I hope it's good though. And there's the blast furnace that we need to complete. Uh, what is this? Thankfully, I found that spawner and the two villagers that were locked up inside. I'm guessing these are where the villagers are at. Very cool build. Yo, honestly, whoever built this deserves a reward. This is so cool. Rebounding for what does rebounding do? Is it where you like get a basketball that comes off the board? Okay, I'll stop with it. Joke. Melee attackers may find themselves much further away, so like knockback, but an armor. For collecting every type of furnace, I got myself some rewards that would start the process of getting the materials I need to create a backpack. I then found out about skill points and how you can upgrade yourself as a player. So here was my line of thinking and what I chose. Do we have any? <gasps> we have skill points. Oh, we're definitely gonna boost that. 
Boost it four times. Dexterity. I'll oh, yeah, add one for the speed. Strength. We'll do all the rest in strength. What the heck? To this day, I don't even know why that happens. This isn't the only time it happens, but yeah, kind of weird. Could get this, but we need redstone. Wait, huge plus about being in the starter pack Minecraft Horror House. There's going to be redstone as fake blood. So we can make that explorer's compass now. And thank God for the typical horror map starter pack. Nature's compass. All right, so we got that down. More coal and some rabbit hide. By completing that task, I got more rewards. That allowed me to create my backpack. Nice. Uh, one last thing. We gotta light up this place, which is exactly what I did, and then went to sleep. All right, serenity. Does that mean like my ears are? Shit? All right, let me search on Google. Oh, the koi fish around stop mobs from spawning. Oh my gosh, no way. We're like in a surrounded safe haven. Okay, to be fair, does that not look like an ear that is bleeding? Like actually. But anyways, it was good to clear that up and know that the koi fish around my house literally stop mobs from spawning. I crafted myself a diamond pickaxe and went on a little short adventure in search of another portal, which I just found it right over the hill where I live. It had pretty cool enchants on the golden tools. Unfortunately, we all know the durability on that is non-existent. Right, well, let's get these little things. So I finished up getting the obsidian that was there. And I needed some books to create my enchantment table. Somehow I found another secret compartment to the house. Hello? Wait, is there a way to activate this? I never found the way to activate this contrapment, but I just broke it down and opened up the chest inside. Diamond shovel with mending and impaling seven. Ain't nothing better. I crafted a much needed enchantment table and then went to sleep. Day 8, I broke down more bookshelves that were spread throughout the house and went down to the basement, created some stairs to create my enchantment table zone. No, scuffed man. Unfortunately, I ran into a lot of gravel in the area, but after some hard work, I got the job done. All right, it's going to be very scuffed, but what's new, eh? I kind of like this effect. The issue is if a mob comes out of nowhere. And I say we leave that part open. That's character. Yes, I know having silk touch would be smart. Does it look like I have silk touch now? So shut up. Damn, a little feisty there. But anyways, I went to sleep. Day nine, I opened up the barrels that were outside of my house and got quite a few bones because I needed bone meal. And right before I was about to do the tree growing process, I had no idea that I was eating a golden apple. So I wasted one. Oh no, I didn't mean... No, I meant to have the pork chops. But anyways, I got that long schlong of a spruce tree to grow. Chop that thing down. Also, Gabuino visited earlier, and I think he drowned in that like little water part, so. Gabuino die? That was, that was kind of sad. I think he did. I think he drowned there. With the wood I got, I crafted the bookshelves for my enchantment table area, and was introduced to a new form of enchanting your things. Or what the hell is Eterna? Quantic warping? All right, well, at least that's set up. Now my eyes were set upon finding the divine stone, but that would have to wait for another day. All right, we're gonna go to the depths of hell to find it, AKA the mines. Now it was time to pursue the divine sword. I saw this area that goes kind of down, but it was just a dead end. However, I found this moonstone ore that is better than diamonds. So I was quite surprised just to find it that close up to the surface. Man, how's something better than diamond? Just like, just chilling. So I kept on walking along and found this temple. No mob mess with anything, I swear. I don't trust this at all. Something's gonna spawn. It took me so long to loot this place because I was so paranoid that it was gonna be laced with a TNT trap. Good news, it wasn't, and I was able to extract all the loot this temple has to offer. Manuscripts, ice and fire, uh, I'll take it. And a rogue eye, emeralds. From the bottom of that temple, I created a staircase going deeper into the world and eventually found this opening. Okay, you definitely do not want to take that drop. Screw it, I'm just gonna go down there. I jumped down it and started to collect any ores that caught my eye. Eventually, I found the divine stone. There it is, the divine stone. Beautifully waiting and that's all it takes to- <laughs> You dickhead, I saw you. A battle on Mustafar. I extracted that up. Well, we can already make a sword. And now transitioning into day 11. I started to explore the area a little more and found some chests with some loot inside of them. Hello there. 
Nothing too crazy, except for the god apple it had inside. Hey, hey, just so you know, I'm not doing anything with that shit except getting the chest. I am not dealing with citizens who don't know how to function. I actually never even did it for the chest. I am not messing with that, like I said. Incompetent people, and you get punished for it. What the hell? And here's a little small montage of what happened on my way up. Yep, I'm out of here. I'm not dealing with that ever again. Swanton bombing creepers. Oh! Yes, thank you. I guess it was kind of good those poison spiders pushed me back down. Then I found this chest, which had this slime heart. It has a lot of pros and cons to it. But anyways, I would call it a night within the mines. Day 12, I returned back up to the surface and found a tower with some alright loot inside of it. Alright, let's just create the Zygot sword. I returned back home and created the divine sword 15 hearts of damage there is a powerful power in the sword yeah no kidding i got a random enchantment reward from completing this task and i got mine's fervor guess it's kind of good that being miner's fervor it will mine very fast but never instantly i returned to the enchantment table and saw what i could get on my new sword smite four or like ass four anyways i went to sleep and day 13, I started to wander away from the house and found this unique little creature. What was that? Dandelinier? I kept wandering about, exploring the wilderness, and then eventually my game crashed. No! When I returned, I found myself a mushroom temple. Thankfully, no traps on the inside. And I found one of the eyes that you need to eventually make it to the end. Overall, this temple just spoiled me. Punch four. Wow, another old eye. Okay, what the hell? Time to roll the balls. I'd post up there for the night. And on day 14, Yorick once again showing why he's so useful. Uh huh. All right. Creeper? No way this guy talks to. Oh, there's a little camp. Looks like they got wiped out or something. <laughs> no way! Sneeze again. Now, rumor has it that Shroomling was never seen again. Right in the area, there's this little graveyard, and whenever you open the chest, a ghost appears. So I dealt with that paranormal activity. I made my way through the mangrove swamp here on a boat, and found my house. So of course, I went through all of the chests that were inside and got even better loot. Wow! All right, Thorns 4. Lots of very good finds. I went to sleep in the open mangrove swamp. And on day 15, a flock of birds jumped. Oh my god, no, 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 no. All it takes is one of them to go down for them to run away like Dylan Dennis. But anyways, I found this little hot air balloon, which had some gold and iron inside of it. I found one of those towers I found a couple days ago. So after looting the chest leading up to there, I of course got the block. Soon after, I found this broken portal, got the gold block, and then found this little pit where I got a lava bucket from the chest. There's a guy in there. There's two! We can ask some companions. Companion added. Two more lads were added to the company, and I would go to sleep in their quarters for that night. Day 16, I stocked up on some bread. And don't take this joke politically, please. There's a little hut there, so let's take out the people who are there. Let's pull an America and just take over someone's land. Oh, there's a big troll now. Yep, they're all on site. They're on site. You look like you're from Clash Royale. Poor guy, he actually looks like kind of nice. Not nice enough, though. So after taking out that little squadron of goblins, there was a village nearby and it was actually my first one. I went to the, I believe it was the church building and inside there was a book that I had not seen before as a part of Ice and Fire. Book of Monsters. I'm guessing that's stuff to do with dragons. More wheat. Okay, we're good. I thought we were about to have like a famine, but I think we're chilling now. Number one thing you always gotta do in a village is take that waystone. All right, am I, am I cocky or can we take out a Cyclops? Run lads, run lads. Those are all my arrows. Wait, I have more arrows. I'm scared, I'm scared. Those are all my arrows. Oh, even though the kill won't count because it's a lava kill, I want the loot. The Cyclops had a slow and painful death, but eventually the lava consumed it, and I would go to sleep in what was once its home. There'd be more than just that sh**. What the hell is the point of taking out this mother 
curve. That's all you get. For a happy ending, we'll let the sheep free. How about that? And day 17, not gonna lie, I was pretty disappointed with the loot that was inside. All right, I'm running. I'm not messing with those worms. I've seen that stuff in RL craft. I'm not, if it's an RL craft, you don't mess with it. It's honestly a good motto to live by when it comes to survival. Hey there, Shamu. Trust me, I don't work at SeaWorld. No need to mess with me. Oh! Man, good shot. Fortunately, I'm gonna start the coronavirus now because I got bit by a bat. Oh wait, no, I had to eat one if I wanted that to happen. Inside, I got some decent loot. I got another one of those row guys and a bunch more emeralds. Now, after that fun little adventure, there's always the journey back home. It was a smooth one at least, and I was able to go to sleep at peace. All right. Back with it, day 18, still slack. I started by crafting some bread and doing a little more chest dumping. And please don't do what I just did with these orbs. I go bang, they level you up. Oh, I have two skill points. Okay, I want to get my... So we're going to add two there. After getting my dexterity up, I took my chances with the bow I had on the enchantment table and was pretty satisfied. On breaking three, that's actually perfect. I now wanted to enchant my divine sword, and in the process of doing so, I was messing around with the skeleton head I had, and found out this is a way to increase the chance of getting better enchants. Once again, please don't do what I just did with those orbs. Save them. Later in the video, you'll see why. For almost the rest of the day, I found a little gravel pocket and mined a way to get some flint. And as I was walking to my house, I found these zombies that I had never seen before. Ooh, I took him out and thankfully didn't get any poison effect and would go to sleep. Day 19, I crafted a bedroll and claimed some rewards. Another one, literacy. Ooh, choice reward, honestly, levels. Literacy, what book did I get? The story of Larry the Sheep. Maybe one day we'll have a bedtime story. I need to find chickens. So now I wanted to go out to get some chickens to get feathers for arrows. Before heading out, I added a waystone for my home, and then sets out on my adventure. Whoa, Nemo antagonist. And not gonna lie, then I had a flashback to the parasite mod. If you know, you know. What the hell is that? Water bug, ugh. I was like, dude, there's no way they're escaping parasites on this mod pack. <laughs> After traveling for some time, I would call it a night by this goblin camp. Day 20, I saw a ship in the distance and was ready to take it over. My ship now, boy. Oh, it's a good ship. Some villagers on it. I took what I could get and then had my first sighting of a live and breathing dragon. What the hell? Oh my god, let that thing stay there. I don't have any arrows. Thankfully, it did not aggro me and I made my way up the tower. Got some tomes, enchants, and better armor. Oh, seagulls. I can kill them, right? I can bait them. Here, I have food. I have food. Yep, I just got robbed. Nice. Never mind. It's not a really good way to go. There's a ship there. Let's check that out. Ice maze. Oh, is this what this is? I was confused. I was like, it looks like there's structure, but there looks like there isn't. Did you feel me on that one? All right, pillagers. Perfect. Ho, 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 motherfucker. Yikes. Guys, it's actually so beautiful in the snow. Sorry, bad timing. Can I block it? Yes. Now it was time for me to enjoy the spoils of the ship. Now we're talking. Dude, the horns of Gondor. But that wasn't it. After taking out the people in the captain's cabin, I think that's what it's called, I found arguably the best area for loot. Exploration. A shell horn can summon Captain Cornelia. Wait, isn't that a challenge? Oh my god. Yes, a leather belt! Clamber on the walls allows to move through cobwebs with ease. Midnight robe. I spent quite a while looking through everything and now transitioning into day 21. Because I was surrounded with all of these ships with amazing loot, I of course had to check out the neighboring ships. Show me the goods. Infinity Ham, thank you. We don't have to worry about food now. It's kind of in the name, but Infinity Ham, it has like four bites you can take until it becomes a bone. However, the meat will like regenerate. So it's kind of like Deadpool's dick. Anyways, I kept on getting very good enchants, ancient tomes, you name it. I then found this weird frozen chest that caused this to happen. Oh, there's a chest. The Dead Sea Scrolls. Huge lore behind that. Alright, that's one way to kill my ears. What the hell? 
just happened? <laughs> I, don't, I don't know what to tell you. I've never seen that before in a game, but okay. No, no, I didn't ask for a boss battle. Who is D? Okay. Some chaotic moments came back to back to back, leading to this fight with this poisonous skilled maw, which gave me enchanted book with shield bash six. And I thought it was a good time to go to sleep within this cabin. Day 22, a couple of my brain cells revived themselves and gave me this idea. I really should have just gotten a Fletcher back home, shouldn't I have? I just realized we literally have a villager trap downstairs that we can buy arrows off of. It's a little camp. I stumbled upon this sort of pillager camp that goes underground. I'm not sure what the exact name is to it. And I fought my way down and found this golden moth, which I, I think I was the cause of its own death. Jar of golden moth. You free, my guy. Is it dying? Oh, it's dying. And it's dead. Thank you. Oh! Wait, that's actually a lot of them. Note to self, don't kill an infested pillager. Just let it live. Or else this will happen. God, how much silver fish could this guy pull out of his ass? At least he gave me a Protection 9 book. But there wasn't anything too significantly good within this underground area. And then I had to put the Spider-Man necklace to the test. Look at this. Oh my god. That's actually so cool. Afterwards, I found another one of those underground pillager camps, took them all out, and would call it a night in there. Day 23, I made the journey back home and found this waystone on the way back, so I of course used it to get back faster. As soon as I dumped just about everything, I created the fletching table. Now let's get hell arrows. All right, who wants to be employed? Looks like you got the job. I stocked up on quite a lot of arrows, and now I had quite a few rewards to claim for myself. NXP levels all day, five levels. All right, we are a very high level. 15 levels, okay. <laughs> We are, we are getting stacked. I created an anvil and I combined some of the enchanted books to make my divine sword. Well, quite a divine sword. Yeah, why not? We're rich. Dude, that spider coming out of my chest looking like some alien stuff right there. I don't know how I feel about it. Day 24, I went back to the path towards the ocean and ran into some sirens. That looks like a siren island if I've ever seen one. And after defeating them, I had some rewards, but was stopped. Nope, I'm not messing with that. That is an RL craft, mother We don't mess with those. Hold on. Okay, choice reward, 10 levels. Why, who would pick five? Like, come on now. And I made my way back to the ice maze area where I saw the aftermath of what the dragon had done to one of the pillager camps. Yeah, dragon definitely came through. Maybe that was the D on the map. That is my theory. I think they took out the dragon. My question is, where is its skeleton then? Just as I thought the dragon was dead, there it was in the distance. Good eye. There. Oh, shit. I see it. He sees me, he sees me, he sees me. Come on. Alright, he's not aggroing me. Oh my god, punch is going in. Uh oh. Run, 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 run. Bitch. And at last, I defeated my first ever dragon. You know, I did a little research beforehand, so I started to collect sand and transform it into glass so I could have some bottles to withdraw the goods that comes from a dragon. Ooh, and the sun goes down. That's one way to spend a sunset, isn't it, dragon? So, on day 25, I crafted those glass bottles and extracted the dragon's blood. Oh, now it's naked. So we got five bottles. I went inside the ship that was beside the dragon's nest and took out the pillagers that were in the captain's quarters and then went through the loot that was there. The biggest highlight was obtaining a magic mirror. Sharpness 4, flame. Magic mirror, thank you. This is how we get back home with ease. Deja vu. Isn't that like that Olivia Rodrigo song? You're seeing Unbreaking 3, Protection 3. I headed south away from the ice maze and I was paying close attention to the mob marker that is on the top and I noticed that there was a dragon. Wait, is a dead dragon here? Is it underground? Wait, is it dead or alive? That's alive. <laughs> Get out. Get out. <gasps> you 
mother f Why is there so many? Just kill the dragon. I killed it. Oh my god. Get me out. Get me out. Jesus, dude. Look at my armor. It's dead. It is absolutely dead. Oh, no wonder. There's a whole spawner thing. Don't, don't. Dude, I was shooting arrows like Legolas, though. I was going off. Yeah, quite a hectic minute, to say the least. And to make a good moment a bad moment, well, my inventory was absolutely full, and I didn't know that when you were trying to extract blood from the dragon, well, you're not going to get anything in return. And I don't realize that for a while. Where did my other bottles go? Don't tell me it fell here. There's no way I just got one and no dragon skills again. What? I spent quite a lot of time looking for those non-existent bottles, unfortunately. But hey, at least I got this diamonds achievement. And transitioning now to day 26. I returned back to the surface, but quickly went down under and had some skill points to spend. One, two, and a lot of strength. As I went deeper into the cave, I found this weird structure, but unfortunately I had no idea how to interact with it. Bro, what is this? I collected some lapis, and then used the magic mirror to get back home. Right now. Beautiful. I did some chest assortment, and by that I mean just dump whatever I don't want in my inventory into a chest. Added the dragon head for decoration on the second floor porch, and I claimed some of the rewards that I deserve. On diamonds, we get this dead miner's pickaxe, obtain a dragon bone, at five levels, take that all day. Afterwards, I would go to sleep, and now day 27 started with me crafting a diamond helmet. And with me being level 42, I wanted to test my luck on the enchantment table. Oh, you can also get projectile stuff on it? Okay. Projection 3, we gotta go with that, and that's all I get. That's kind of an L, I will admit. I'll keep wearing that though until it dies. Projection 3, we'll go for it. And on breaking through, yeah, that's good. I then was trying to find a way to disenchant certain pieces of armor, but by disenchant, I mean extract whatever it's onto it. But I never figured out how. I'm pretty sure it was just one search away, but unfortunately, like I said, I never found the way to do so. But I'm sure there's a way. I just, I'm being dumb right now. I went on to combine these two pieces of diamond leggings to create a pretty decent enchanted diamond leggings. And I also upgraded my diamond chest plate to make it a bit more powerful and healed it with diamonds because why not? Day 28, I started the process of getting the materials I need to create a structure compass. Before that though, I stocked up on some more arrows from the pillager who's definitely not being held hostage in my basement. And after, I had all the materials I needed and crafted the structure compass. And you know what that means? We're in business. Find myself a cold eye. Time to go on another voyage to find an igloo and possibly get a cold eye. On my way there, I found uh, another replica of my house got whatever good loot was inside of it, and decided to call it a night right in front of the fireplace. Day 29, I finished up getting whatever good loot was left for me to collect, and got some revenge on those annoying ass birds, and got a pretty good enchanted book. I continued my adventure in search of the igloo that I pinged on the structure compass, and eventually I made it, and made my way down to some good news. Bang. Yes! first one. A nicey look. Unfortunately, on my way up, I accidentally switched to my Fuck magic mirror, so I went home on accident. I had some rewards to collect once more, so I chose two ender bags, which gave me two ender pearls in total. I put the cold eye in a safe space and went to sleep. Day 30, I decided to set out for the corrupted eye. You see, it was meant for us to go home. And I think it's in the direction of where we last saw the lads. Maybe they'll, they'll TP to us and forgive us, you know? I was right. The lads that I left behind, without even mentioning, were still alive. The whole gang's still here. I had to cross the ocean, so I ended up losing the lads again, but I did find this huge dragon skeleton. All right, I don't think they tagged along, that's okay. I then arrived to my destination, and although there were a lot of mobs, I used the creepers to my advantage. Perfect, just what I wanted. After I felt safe, I made my way up the tower to find once more just what I needed. Yes, okay, we got the eye. The eye of a greedy king that faded in solitude. 
Legend says it will bring infinite fortune to its owner. It was like the intro was related to that or something, you know? The next place I wanted to visit was a mansion, so I made as much ground as possible until the sun would set and I would go to sleep. Day 31, I would apply a relic that would basically make me the Flash and the desert. I ran into a pack of wolves as I entered the desert, but thankfully this body of water helped me take them out. Good boy. More like b boy. Now here's the relic in full effect, but as I was running, I once more encountered a dragon. My balls across your face. Ah! Oh my god, I'm a beast. Ooh. <gasps> I took that shit head on. You can't even call me a pussy after that. This time I didn't mess up and was able to extract all the fire dragon blood I could. Dude, look at the size of that. That's some like ancient house of dragon type shit. It was quite massive. And as I got all the bones from that dead dragon, I saw a cyclops in the distance. And the first time I killed a cyclops didn't count since it was done with lava. So I saw this as a good opportunity to get that quest finished. I, I gotta kill that from a distance. I still need my achievement for that. All right, just keep, keep a very far distance. Ooh, my name is nobody. From the cyclops, I got an eye of cyclops. Cause like, Ooh. duh. Inflicts weakness to all nearby hostiles when- yeah. Fun fact, I've been stung twice in my life. I entered this desert tomb, not really sure what to call it, and there were quite a few spawners when entering. The loot wasn't too impressive, however, within this tomb, there were many desert temple type looting spots, so I had to check them out. In one of them, I got Efficiency 7, another Scarab Talesman, Knockback 3, and overall there were a lot more goods within these chests, but I just didn't need everything. So after some looting, I decided to go to sleep. I assume it's nighttime, yep. Oh, Goblino, perfect timing. And on day 32, there was a surprise waiting for me outside. Oh! Man, does that take me back? And from watching the videos as a kid to killing the mutant skeleton. Quite a full circle moment, and I got 10 levels for defeating that mutant skeleton. Y'all hear something? I don't. Always keep your earplugs on you. And here is when I got my infinity hand snatched straight from my hand. Very sad moment. I was too concentrated on the dragon ahead, but before we get back to the infinity ham, here's how it went. I'm not happy about that. I'm not happy about that. I need water. Awa, awa. I think my ham just got stolen by Seagull. I wish I was joking, but I'm not. I think he sees me. I'm kidding, I'm kidding, man! <gasps> swim, 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 swim. All right, any last words? That was pretty emotional. Whatever Seagulls were nearby, well, let's just say they aren't nearby anymore. Unfortunately, I wasn't able to find my infinity ham, and I would go to sleep right by the shore. And on day 33, I continued my rampage on the seagulls, but with no hope in finding the infinity ham, I found myself another one of those towers, got the books that were inside. Mythic affix tome, I think that's very good. And I found another one of those unique looking temples, where it had another rogue guy inside. After taking out this skilled zombie, I got to infinity as a drop. Infinity! And at last, I had made my way to the mansion. Things were pretty easy on the first level, but as I went upstairs, things would begin to pick up. There you are. Oh, that's a lot. That's a lot of them. Never mind. Oh my god! Yes. 
It took quite a while to clear things up, but at the end I was able to go to sleep within the mansion. Day 34, I put one of the Totem of Undyings on as a charm, and put Baraku's village as the next task at hand. But you know, then the siren had to attract my attention. Where? And then something far worse almost happened. Let there be no harm coming my way. Fuck. I saw it, I saw it, I saw it, I saw it, I saw it. I paused here to take a breather. And think, how the hell am I gonna get out of this? Holy shit. I just spent through two of them, didn't I? It's kind of <gasps> Kill it! It's huge! This thing's more powerful than dragon, in my opinion. That is the prime example of a what-if moment. What if I didn't go to the mansion the previous day? Well, this run would be over. Oh my god. No, 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 that, that was a bloody problem, I'll tell you that. That sucked. At the end, I would be getting the last laugh against that sea serpent. And I traveled a bit more until I went to sleep in the open. Day 35, I stumbled upon two towers that were close to each other and got any good books that were inside. Nope, I saw it, I saw it, I saw it, I saw it. Dude, what is up with sea serpents by the bay? Look at it, go- okay. For safety purposes. For safety purposes. For safety purposes. Wait, how do you actually say it? I, anyways, I took out the sea serpent. Eventually, I made it to Baraka's village, where I once again underestimated the fighting difficulty. In sniper, inbound. Look at this whole army coming after me. Come on! Ooh! End it, end it, end it. Oh my god. Alright, now I say we teleport home. And get the hell out of here. When I got home, I added two dragon skulls as decorations to the outside area, and then would go to sleep. We got tons of rewards to open up. So let's get to it. And levels all day, baby. And we're gonna check what that is after. We're gonna reward coal. What an owl. Bosses. Okay, I'm gonna go for 20 levels because who wouldn't? Random reward. Don't know what we got. And we got diamond. Nice little quest reward pack opening. Not too bad, especially with those enchantment levels. Afterwards, I went to my trusty Fletcher, got some more arrows, crafted more bread, and now I was set out to take out Captain Cornelia. Alright, Captain Cornelia, here I come. Um, no serpent, no serpent, no serpent, no serpent. Let me get across and sleep. <gasps> That's a chunky one, too. Jesus. Day 37. I collected the sea serpent scales, but of course, another sea serpent appeared. Another one? Jesus Christ. Imagine being limited to only breathing in water. Oh, there's another one. <laughs> there is another. <laughs> yeah, back to back to back to back. Wait, back to back to back. Sea serpents. I think that's how you say it. Anyways, I took out the siren and I saw a sunken ship. So of course I had to go under the water and get the treasure map that was within it. I located the treasure, but unfortunately it did not have one of the eyes I need to go to the end. Aha, give me the eye. It's not in there. Oh my God, <laughs> I can't be asked. No! Honestly, going to hell for killing that flappy bird. Like, look at this guy. How, how, why would you? A slabfish. That's your name. <laughs> yeah, after that friendly fire, I eventually made it to this pink little island and went to sleep. Day 38. I made it back to the ice maze because this is where you can activate the battle with Captain Cornelia. And here's how things panned out. Let's go to work. That is so eerie. Okay. Oh my gosh, man, whoa. Ooh! Oh god. Ok, 
Okay, we're gonna pop a gapple. Beautiful. Oh, we got a helmet. All right, anybody else wants to watch the 100 days like this? It's about the experience, man. I successfully took out Captain Cornelia after a long battle. With this key, we can open a chest hidden in the pillager shelter. I don't know if the shelter is the tall thing or the short thing. Ooh, who's that? Oh, not someone good. Oh my god. Is this a Game of Thrones enemy? I took out that skeleton grave master and it gave me a key that would become handy in the future. Oh, another key. A grave master's key then i ran into these hunchback looking creatures thankfully they're not too op and i was able to take them out that is the weirdest thing i've ever run into day 39 i located a pillager oil rig that's what i'm gonna call it because it kind of looks like one and i began my campaign against them i of course came out victorious and the loot was all right iron pickaxe what is this dead loot bro the ships have better stuff all right may or may have already done this one however if there's the key thing, then where is it? That key I got from, I think it was Captain Cornelia, allows you to open a chest that is in a hidden room within this underground bunker at the pillager zone. And I was able to find the secret room. Maybe it's in this room, in the frozen stuff. Ah. Jesus, all this TNT. Ah, there it is, okay. I got a lot of unique rewards from the chest, such as the Rune of the Storm, which I would end up using soon. If you listen carefully, you can hear the horns of hundreds of ships lost in the ice maze. Yes, I hear it all the time. Rune of the Storm, the enchanting table to learn the rune. Sea stew, I'm just gonna eat this. Whoa. Overall, it was a pretty cool find and I would go to sleep on top of the ice maze. Day 40, I started by using a couple of my skill points. As I continued my journey, I found another one of those boats with very good loot, so of course I had to take a peek inside and gather what I could. Sleeping Edge 3, we do not have that. Eventually, I made it to a desert where I found two new lads, so of course I added them to the company. Soon after, I found this desert temple, which had good loot, it's just stuff I already have. I found myself another tower, where I had these books inside, and a new shield while I'm at it. These things freak me out. Ooh! God damn, so much damage. Oh, a little too much damage, actually. How do they kill him? I, and I don't. Alright, let's go to sleep in here, boys. Traps and curses. Yep, you already know how this is gonna go. All right, inventory is so full. I think I may waste stone home real quick. Uh, desert. A much needed trip back home to clear up some of the inventory space. And I went down to the enchantment table to use the rune of the storm. I had no idea this was about to happen. What the hell just happened? Who the hell is Hilda? So yeah, Hilda started saying a bunch of stuff, creating lore that I don't know anything about and kept on asking if I can give her a shard. I don't know what that means. Just so you know, I never interacted with Hilda ever again, so I have no idea what shard Hilda was talking Story about. Another day, all I know is that I lost my enchantment table, and I'm not happy. <laughs> okay, I don't want to hear that here. Thank you very much. After clearing up some space, I decided to create some sea serpent armor, because I always wanted to craft it, because, you know, I always saw it in thumbnails and stuff, so I thought it'd be pretty cool to do that. It just looked kind of bad on me since my skin like it outshines the armor in some parts man i'll click uh eh, aren't the leggings showing soon i saw that there was a wandering trader that was outside and he had a trade that intrigued me holy shit, that's actually worth it i probably didn't have to do that all right protection five mending unbreaking five berserker's fury you're not gonna find anything better than this except for maybe this little did i know the legs that i already had were better so unnecessary purchase but hey at least we helped the economy day 40 I crafted my enchantment table that was robbed by Hilda, and I began to enchant some of the sea serpent's armor. I also disenchanted the netherite boots that I had, and got protection for an leafwalker on them. Well, let's see, any quests? Oh, I got a reward for this. Plus 30. A waystone. That is the most dead thing we probably could have gotten. Okay, we'll check in a bit. Summon Hilda. 10 XP levels all day. The leader as a book, worker exploitation, might as well just call it slavery. I decided to disenchant my helmet and give it another go to see if I could get anything good, and I ended up not. Section 3. 
Ah, oh, there is a cave opening here, so I guess we go down it. Oh, the lads are following me. I went down the little opening that was beside the enchantment table room, and as I journeyed down, found some skulls that could add a little more juice to the enchantment table, and then ran into a boss zombie. Whoa, who are you? What the fuck? Lydia the Pathetic. I took out Lydia and was introduced to a new form of getting Brilliant. the best possible enchants on armor. He wasn't so strong? Man, tell me about it. Holy sh**. What did I just get? Where were these at the start of my run? I'm glad I had that interaction because now I knew that there was a better way to get strong armor. To get back home, I just used my magic mirror and I would call it a night. Day 43. When I went outside to go craft my nether portal, someone was waiting for me. What the hell? How does this just spawn here? Damn, these are actually better. Wait, I thought these were better, but they're actually not. These are. It's actually pretty funny. Once things were cleared, I crafted my nether portal and went inside. I was in search for one of the eyes you need to get to the end, and one of the locations was a nether fortress. Finally, some open, open land. Hey, yeah, Glosquito. Remember those guys? After traveling for a bit and mining through a lot of netherrack, I found the fortress and started looking through the chest where I found this ghost skin talesman. Whoa! 50% projectiles will fly through the wear without causing damage. That sounds pretty cool. I added a waystone to the nether fortress, took out some blazes, and decided to go back home where I went to sleep. Day 44, I got the materials I needed to craft a runic hammer, which is used to heal your artifacts since they run out of durability. I also got what I needed to craft the runic anvil, and I had some rewards to claim for what I just did. 15 levels, let me pass on that, and another 15, I'm level 85, I don't think I've ever seen that so high before. <laughs> Alright, so, ladies and gentlemen, you're wondering why have I been doing this? Well, this is how you repair your artifacts, as shown right here. So I was kind of disappointed that the runic hammer's durability is kind of bad. I then added mending to my chest plate, and more skulls to the enchantment table room. I then crafted a diamond pickaxe since I wanted a fresh one to enchant, and then realized I was out of lapis. I just realized I don't have lapis though, so screw going to sleep, let's find some lapis. I found a cave opening, and as I went down, I found something I had never seen before. Emeralds? Diamonds? Wait, what is all this sh There's a pressure plate right there. A pocket very high up on the surface, with every ore you could possibly want. Why was there a pressure plate there? And I got lapis and all, everything I needed. Nice, I don't have to go that deep. So I got what I came for and more, went back to the enchantment table and enchanted my pickaxe. However, since I got vein mining, I decided to craft another one, enchanted once more, got unlucky again. So I crafted another one, enchanted it once more, and I was happy to just have efficiency four on it. Since I did have another book that paired well with what I just got. I also added an ancient tome to my divine sword, which gave it plus one sharpness, making it a sharpness six sword. Nice. Day 45, I returned to the desert in the structure that I guess is kind of like a pyramid. And we're back. And I began to explore it. I'm gonna assume this is like the jungle temple and there's gonna be traps. There were tons of traps throughout this maze. <gasps> Ooh! Nah fam, if you die, you die. The game's the game. I'm kidding here. I feel bad. 100% trap. Yeah, I can, I can feel it. What was the lace to? Okay, low key, I may take this off. Wait, it's making me actually too fast. Yeah, there we go. That's better. Okay, I know these go down, but... I obviously didn't go down every single one I saw since it's quite repetitive loot. But eventually, I made it to this room. Ooh. There's a lava on top. There's a tomb. Is this it? No trap? Me being paranoid. Wait, really? Okay. I left the maze while underground and found this spawner, which had these diamond boots in him with unbreaking eight. I also found this structure underground and I found this ring inside. Basic ring. When worn. Oh, okay. Day 46, I had my daily dose of an interaction with an insane dog pack. And of course, one of them had to be infested. Oh, no, 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 no. All I did was go a little more northwest from where I was just at. And there it was, another dragon. I guess I'm gonna keep on traveling. And maybe find another dragon. Fingers crossed. Yep. Oh, let's definitely put this on. We need the boost. Yep.
I was getting better and better in taking out dragons, and I got its blood, and checked out its nest for any loot I could get. I found another one of those towers that is filled with a lot of enchanted books. I got mending, and this cool one that you can put on shears. Ew, this one has like hair. Oh, there's variants. Yeah, I had no idea there are other variations oh of Cyclops. But anyways, I took it out from a distance. Nice. And then found this little tower where there wasn't really anything good in it. Day 47. I started by taking out this death worm, which dropped me a couple of things. All Atreides. And after a bit more of walking, I decided to go back home. Death worm egg? Are you telling me I can hatch that monstrosity? When I got home, I looked through my chest to find enchants I could apply on a bow, got them together, and made my bow a lot more powerful. I should have seen what combination was cheaper, but okay, we have unlimited arrows, so. I decided to go in a different direction this time, and check out the Hydra's nest that was near my house. I never went near it early on, because I knew it would whoop my ass. To my surprise, it wasn't there. However, as I walked a little more, I found right where the Hydra was at. Oh, the Hydra went all the way here? And this would go down as one of the most painfully long battles that never ended. No, <laughs> it's in the water now. Oh, it grew back one of its heads. Okay, I should let it swim back here. It's, it's just kind of out there. Because of my punch, I shot it into the water, but if you don't know, you gotta kill this thing with fire damage. And all I had was my bow. I don't have fire aspect on my sword. And here's the frustration in full effect. All right, now I gotta do the switcheroo. Oh, flame doesn't work now. I think I'm gonna give up on this fight. Like, I'm just going through my durability. Guess I need fire aspect. I'm not doing this shit. I'm actually so triggered. A48, I found this unique structure, which had some iron blocks on it. So of course I took them. I then found some ancient remains. Out of nowhere though, this baby zombie came riding out with a chicken. What the heck? Oh no, that's a be free chicken. You weren't supposed to get hit there. After getting those emerald blocks, I found this tower, which I had not yet discovered yet. Battle towers. I took out all of the mobs inside with ease. And on the top, I was rewarded with some gold blocks a waystone, and a good place to sleep. Day 49, I watched the sunrise and made my way to the ocean where I found Neo as a sea serpent from the Matrix. Dude, it's dancing for me, oh my god! It's in the Matrix! I found myself another sunken ship and got the treasure map that was inside and then ran into the sea creature I had never seen before. What the hell? From the depths. This was shine with a strange blue ore. I got some unique things from it, but anyways, I went on to locate where the treasure was on the map. And thankfully, it had the eye that I needed. The eye. Yes! As I made my way through the ocean, of course, I ran into another sea serpent, where I had to make a very quick decision to live. I got too cocky in that fight, so I had to pause and think just exactly what I was going to do, which was magic mirror my ass back home. Yes, I'm willing to run all the way back. I didn't think it would do that much damage. I basically had to reset my adventure and run all the way back to where I was. On the way, I ran into a much needed village since I needed more food, so I collected the hay bales, crafted bread, and of course got the waystone that was there. When I was on the ocean, I used one of my skill points and got revenge on the sea serpent that sent my ass back home. The same mother one. Very cool color. Let me say so myself. Oh my gosh. Oh. <laughs> Started panicking internally. Okay, dude. Another one? Oh my god, that's just everything. Wants to come after me. Okay, what did I just get? That could have gotten bad real quick, but thankfully, my bow and arrow skills saved me. As a reward, I got this cool looking sword. Unfortunately, it isn't that powerful, but hey, it looks sick. As I was reaching the shore, I found a dragon. Ah, I wonder why I was getting lag. Took it out with ease and would go to sleep right beside it. Day 50, I started my morning by collecting its blood. And as I kept on going, I found myself a tower that I always wanted to take out. All right, I will take that though. I have been 
wanting that to show up for so long. I didn't really know how you progressed in it, so I like took out a couple of the spawners, then made it all the way to the top, and realized that, nope, you can't skip through this. And I'm guessing you need to get keys from the chest. Okay, so there is no skipping around is there down to the bottom when i got to the bottom floor i went to sleep and on day 51 i went level by level taking out every spawner opening the chest to get the keys you need to activate the boss battle eventually i did find all three and was able to start the boss battle i've never taken out this guy i will see this guy in thumbnails now it's my turn whoa okay my ears are hurting up. Go, Mr. West. Okay. Okay, fam. Yeah, we're gonna pop one of these to play it safe. Nice. Uh... Oh, this whole shit's going down. I forgot. Oh my god. No. Oh, hell no, man. Oh, fuck, that man? for this? I'm going, I'm going. I ran as fast as I could all the way down the stairs and thankfully made it to safety and watched the tower collapse from a distance. Right, don't pelt me. Oh my, I made it down just in time. After walking for a little while more, I decided to magic mirror back home and go to sleep. All right, so we got pretty wank stuff. Most of it's just gonna go upstairs. Yes, one day I'll have a chest assortment day. Today is still not that day. <laughs> okay, bosses. A land golem, that counts, all right, all right. 20 XP levels right here. On day 52, I added the iguana king nest onto my structure compass. It made way in search of its location. Keep clear quarantine zone. Is it worth my time? Nope. After a long day of traveling, I still hadn't made it to the location and I would go to sleep. You know, iguanas, I respect them in real life, but like in person, I feel like they're dragon even better nothing better than waking up to a morning of battling a dragon anyways i'm not going to show you really the full fights anymore unless it's like a stage 5 dragon since these battles are pretty easy now dead but for this one i decided to get its scales isn't that so cool now like we can just take out dragons like yeah yeah just another dragon all right dude the jungles the fps is just not it i don't know why that was the case but anyways i found the iguana and initiated the battle Okay, buddy. Let's quit the fight. Oh my god. I have the high ground. <laughs> I can't resist those jokes. Alright. This unintentionally became a tutorial on how to take out the Iguana King. And this would go down as one of the Sad. easiest fights I've had. Got myself this excavator block. Never used it though. So we get ourselves a reward for that. A random reward. Uh, diamonds. Dude, I actually don't want diamonds. And then we get an enchanted book. That being... Brasswalker 6! Let's go. And as I was leaving the jungle, I saw a familiar face on the top bar. <gasps> for it was run not. We're going to that. that was, this is kind of f***. The location was messed up though, there was all this water, it made it a very hard battle, so a lot of my time was just putting out the water, and the fight itself, well, was literally two hits. Bang! Oh wow, we're about to two shot it. <laughs> oh wow! What a challenge! Alright, rewards. Dude, don't give me that. Don't give me diamonds anymore, man. For the enchanted book, I got fire protection 9 and would go to sleep in that chamber. Day 54. I I guess I had a somewhat of a close call. No, not the skeleton. What the f***? Oh my god, dude. It wasn't working for a bit there. Is this a cyclops? Is this what it means? A land cyclops? Like, I'll kill it. I then finally took out this cyclops. All the other times, the lads would do it. So once I did, I got a reward for it. Oh, okay. The easier Cyclops. And I get a skeletal key for that. Nice. As I traveled on, I found uh, another unique tower. And the only good thing there was a bottle of enchanting. Things would be pretty normy stuff. Yeah. That's alright. And I kept on traveling for the rest of the day. Until I went to sleep on top of the swamp lands. Day 55. I had a pretty high morning. Literally. Oh, that guy. I remember you. What the f*** just happened? I defeated that cockatrice, and the reason why I was going to deserts was in search of dragons. I feel like this is the easiest spot to find a fire one, and that was basically my main objective at this point. My boots broke. That's why I got my spare ones with unbreaking... 
Sweet. Eventually one did appear, and it was this very nice emerald colored one, so... I wish I could tame it, but unfortunately, it has to be put down instead. I secured its blood, and went to sleep on the desert lands that night. Day 56, I traveled a bit more, and in the distance, yes. I saw a dragon's nest. Took it out, got its blood, and there was a mineshaft area right under it, so I had to explore. I got this weird lava bucket, and that's about it. So then I went back up to the surface, saw this unfortunately dead dragon. No, not a dead one. And transitioning to day 57, I decided to go back home. Alright, so I added a new compass. Yeah, I added another structure compass to the game. The main reason I was looking for dragons were to possibly find the ones that were underground, since those are the ones who give you eggs. Survive for 12 hours. But in the meantime, I got my reward for surviving 12 hours, so hey, big ups to me. Wow, fiery torch. Wait, I definitely have skill points too, okay. I gave myself some more intelligence with my skill points and did a few repairs on the runic anvil. Okay, we need coral, which means I need a silk touch pickaxe. Look at my levels right there, level 50, and now it's at 29. Yep, that's how many times I cycled through to try and get silk touch. Wow, there it is. Something here has to give me XP, right? Just give me XP. We got coal, brilliant. Just give me XP. Iron ingots, all right, cool. Give me XP, come on. Just, yes, 10, 10 levels, give me that. I then added silk touch onto the book and enchanted the pickaxe I was gonna add it to and I got pretty damn good enchants on it. I then added the silk touch and that would be the end of the day. So day 58, I set out to find a little coral area so I could get the blocks to get the other structure compass. Once again, this is me kind of reaching. Hopefully it, it can track an underground dragon's den. So basically a waste of time. So yeah, a huge chunk of the day was used on gathering the materials for this structure compass, which I ended up crafting and it was met with disappointment. Structure compass, dragon's den. All right, I think in other words, we're just kind of in terms of finding caverns for dragons we just gotta find it the natural way now i was set out to go take out medusa and on my way there i decided to call it a night day 59 the lads reappeared hey the guys have reappeared nice hope you don't get turned into stone at last i made it to medusa's temple and activated the contraption that opened up the bottom oh, was that it oh, that's actually it all right guys, um, alert mode on, we are going in. I'm just gonna say this ahead of time, thank you for your service. Oh my God, that is actually eerie. Where is it? Ow. Go guys, go guys, okay. Yeah, the kill didn't count, but that's on me. Wait, they killed her, not me. That wasn't supposed to happen. Oh, one of them turned into stone. Rest in peace, like I said. All right, well, next time they're gonna be stationary. I didn't think it was gonna be that easy. What the hell, man? After moving away from that temple, I pinged another one. And on my way there, I re returned back to where I actually started this world. This is where I spawned. It's crazy how far we've made it since this. Oh my God, weren't you the goblin who tried to kill me at the start? Wow, full circle moment. What the hell is that thing? Looks dangerous. Guys? After taking back that ostrich looking bird, I went to sleep. And on day 60, I made sure the lads didn't go down with me. And I took out Medusa myself. This is my business. <gasps> oh, it's a skilled one. And thank you, I get the achievement. Yeah, got a life mending four, that's pretty good. All right, as my reward, I get a waystone. Three of them, I believe. Oh no, just one. Now, I was in search of this little bee nest thing, which eventually I did. So I initiated the battle, but there were some casualties. Yes, perfect time. All right, stay in high alert, boys. We're going in. Never poke a hive, ladies and gentlemen. Oh, you need an ax. Okay. This looks like an off-run bee drill. Oh, shit. Alright, alright, bees, relax, fam. Relax. Alright, just kill the mother. Thank you. Oh my god. I got a stinger sword. It's poison three. Alright, well, that's another thing checked off. 
15 levels. Next on the list was an ocean ruin, but before getting there, I ran into a village, so of course I stocked up on some bread, and the night would turn into one of the most wild ever. Is that a boss? Hold on, I want to take him out. If that's good armor, that's mine. I took out this boss skeleton, which gave me a very powerful shield. What do you drop? Sure, okay, I was hoping for the armor drop. Well, I'm gonna stay up. Are they gonna be spawning like this? This whole time I've been missing out on that? Yes, bring it on. Oh my god, he dropped his whole set. Section four. Creeper. <gasps> Good comms. The closest call I had was against Edward the Ultimate, where I got a little bit too confident. <gasps> and unfortunately, um, some friendly fire was taken. Oh, this, this, oh, shit. My bad, my bad. This guy literally saved my life. This is how I, I treat him. That was so satisfying. What the hell? A dragon! An electric one, I've never seen one. I'm telling you, this night was straight out of a movie. How that dragon just came swooping in out of nowhere. Of course, I was able to take it out and the other bosses that kept on spawn. All right, nice, back to business. And the helmet I was about to receive would be the biggest highlight. Yes, and he dropped everything. I'm about to see the best loot ever. Indestructible beats this. Okay, protection four, don't need. Oh, what? Not enchanted. Kinda sad, kinda sad. Holy crap. And also with the lightning dragon, I decided to get it scales. That was so sick how all of a sudden you see that like, electricity. That was like shit out of a movie. Shout out to the lads. They did put up a fight. Even with the weakest of armor. I wouldn't even have done that. Oh, where did I get this? Flame and indestructible. Well, one more. I ended up staying up that whole night and took out that boss. That gave me another powerful shield on day 61. Dragon. The day kept on getting better as I ran into two dragons that lived side by side each other. There's two! So I was able to take them out both and get their scales with ease and search through their nest for the loot that they had. Oh wow, they were side by side. They lived in harmony and then I came along. After, I was walking for a bit and heard a noise that led me to a boss zombie underground. What was that? It was 100% in here. That's all I know. Whoa, we got a boss. Nice. Crystal, okay. Mending, uh, no protection though. Yeah, it's not as good as what we got. Very cool though. Ooh, it does give us two extra hearts. Wait, wasn't I gonna do an elder monument thing? I just realized that. <laughs> I got totally sidetracked. It just shows you how easily you can get sidetracked in this mod pack. Oh my god. Oh my god. Sea serpent bitch. So how high tank those hits though. Now you're dead now. I'm not even gonna get your skills. It's how pointless you are now. Irrelevant. I think it's sleeping. Wakey wakey motherfucker. Oh god. Alright. After waking up the dragon, I took it out with ease. Gathered its blood, or some of it because I messed up and had a full inventory. Two, three. Where did the other ones go? I've been mugged off again. And as the night was ending, I took out old sheep. Quite, quite a name, but anyways, transitioning to day 62, this is what I got from him. Nope, nowhere close to our helmet. I got mending on a book, nice. Alright, now let's go take out the seamen. Hope nobody walked past my room when I said that. There it is. What do I have again? Not again, bro. The fact that I'm able to tank those hits now just shows how how much we've progressed but anyways it's time to go into the temple and i crafted myself some doors to make the experience a lot safer and i found one of the elder guardians took him out and got just what i was looking for Did you drop it is that the eye what is that yes all right we can go home honestly that's just about everything we want a magic mirrored back home and went straight to the anvil to upgrade bang. the helmets i had bang yep 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 
Beautiful. I got myself some honey bread as a reward for getting the guardian eye. And I looked into possibly combining my bow. Unfortunately, it would lose its quick draw, so I decided not to go through with it. After crafting the witch eye, I had a reward for doing that and got this Brox Great Sword. It's indestructible, sweeping edge three. Now one of the eyes for the end, you need to find in a mine shaft. So I was in search of one. Kind of got led astray because what the heck is this? Bro, what is a mine shaft? But eventually I found this one, but was pretty disappointed with the structure layout not being able to find any chests oh there's it's just they don't mix well with caves so like finding the chest is gonna suck ass what a dead mine shaft all right this place sucks i'm just, I'm just going home go to sleep find a better mine shaft because that was absolutely dead day 63 i started to travel in a different direction to find a mine shaft this is where i left the hydra right and on my way there i ran into the hydra didn't kill it Oh, dragon! But at least there was a dragon nearby, so took that thing out, got its scales. Then I went into this place where it gives you the when in Rome achievement. Wasn't really too intrigued by it. There's not anything really good that I can get from it, so I left shortly after. Then found an ice dragon, took that out. I'm sorry, little guy. I was traveling throughout the night for quite a while and then saw this dragon swoop by and actually didn't put up a fight and decided to fly away. I guess it knows of my reputation now when it comes to dragons. Henry, what a name. I took all night getting Henry's health down, and it wasn't until day 64 that I finally defeated him. And then I got this message. Show me what you got. You feel the vibrations under the ice. Huh? There are vibrations under the ice. I don't know what that's supposed to mean. Is that leading me to dragon? What the f is that? Oh. My. God. No. I feel the vibrations. Like, what, what is this thing? Oh my god, I killed it though. Defeat the mother of the maze. Oh. It was a mother. I did not want to risk anything. I don't know if this thing can one-shot you, so I decided to take it out from a distance on the shore. As a reward, I of course had to go with those 20 levels. Let's look at our level, boy. Empty home. Did I just get robbed? That was a golden apple. Sorry, can't afford to give those up. I'm just gonna kill any seagull I see now. Idiot, you see they're trying to rob me, bro. All right, well, apparently under here is the mine shaft, so good luck to me. The icy mine shaft was probably one of the biggest letdowns in history, besides FaZe Clan's performance in the stock market. I pinged one in the dark forest, but before reaching my destination, I ran into another boss who I took out, and once again got some pretty good armor. Now, this is a boat I haven't taken over, so because of how many times I've looted these boats, it did have good loot, just stuff I already had, but hey, I'm not complaining. I then found another boss. So I spent all night taking it out, and on day 65, I finally defeated it. Only boots this time, which means they must be super powerful. Last Protection 6, Feather Falling 6, Frost Walker 4. And you might as well just call me Jesus, because I'm walking on water now. <laughs> nah, man, this is insane. I can literally cross a whole ocean like this. Eventually, I made it in the area of the mineshaft, and I unintentionally ran into Owen, who I took out, and he gave me pretty powerful boots. Oh my god. Like, I don't know what to say. <laughs> and then I found another boss. These guys are coming out of nowhere left and right. I don't know why I was super passive in this battle. The ones with the bows normally don't do that much damage, but I took it out safely and was rewarded for coming out victorious. Whoa, that's a lot of XP bottles. All right, the helmet looked very good. So it does give us some more health, but we'll put it on for the extra HP. Oh yeah, we'll definitely put it on. Cockroaches. Ew. Ew. Why is there so much? Nah, I'm out. Actually, disgusting. If you couldn't tell, um, cockroaches are one of my biggest fears. So I decided to magic mirror back home. All right, we need to organize some things. Now we're gonna go uh, Draco hunting. All right, let's do some enchants. Yes, yeah, so we gotta say goodbye to our enchant level. Day 66, I saw that I had some skill points to use. So I decided to upgrade my intelligence once more. And on the anvil, I did a little mixing and matching and upgraded my divine sword once more. Jesus, that is 
quite powerful. I believe I added mending to my boots and crafted some golden apples. And we're gonna travel during the nighttime because I cannot waste any more days. That is absolutely true. Dragon hunting actually takes a lot of time if you didn't realize because you need a lot of materials if you want to create the dragon forged armor. Anyways, on my way there, I ran into these like Game of Thrones type mobs. Oh, I got another key. Nice. I didn't stop traveling the whole night and transitioning to day 67. I found this place called the Chilled Halls. This has to be dragons and chilled halls. Not sure what exactly to expect from here. Inside, nothing very impressive unless you were starting your world right then and there. So, hard pass. And then, in the distance, I saw a building, but then a dragon pulled up. So, I had to take that out real quick. What is that? Hi, look who appears. And down it goes. And I had to craft some bottles, so put some sand in the furnace, cook that up, then I got its blood, and then found another boss battle. Please let there be some dragon. Just show, let it show. Just let it show. Do it now. How is this? Okay, that is a boss and a half. Super duper easy though. Wow, okay. And okay, wow. That is very powerful. And at last, I made it to the city that would become very useful for the end. Long journey. The pillagers run the city or what? I don't know how I feel about that. Oh, here's the entrance. Alright, well, cool. But, alright, uh, we know where we're coming for our portal run. When the time would come, this is where we were going to reach the end. With all the thunder striking, I knew there were bosses out there to be slayed. Unfortunately, this one was a tag team duo. Oh, he just launched him into me. Nah, they're gonna work as a pair. I'm good. So, ran away from that, and then I ran into this mutant zombie. Ooh, I have not taken you out. Man was Hulk smashing everywhere, and I'm sorry, I don't know how you fully kill it if you need flint and steel okay. or lava, but yeah, the thing just kept on reviving itself over and over. You just goes translucent. What? How do you kill this thing? Alright, I'm just gonna run away. Day 68, I was still traveling, hoping to find an underground dragon den. But instead, I found this new structure. Quite unique, it has a witch up in there. And then I decided to try my luck underwater to hopefully ping one. Uh, unfortunately, the anglerfish really are territorial, so not much luck there. And then to add on to it, another mother of the maze came out of nowhere. Nope, nope, nope. Where is that thing? Oh my god. I'll just, I'll just let it be. This time I let it live. So, PETA, you can't come after me. Another desert. and we will find one here. I journeyed through the whole day. Wow. And then eventually this boss spawned right in front of me. However, it didn't have anything of use. Tell me what you got. Dog shit. Yeah. Not even worth taking. Wow. And then I found this dungeon. That's a dungeon. Alright, not bad. God apple. Yeah, he's pretty dead. Anyways, we, we need a dragon, not this stuff. Oh man, a very tall tower. I hope it has good loot. Most of the night was just me collecting old dragon bones. And then I took out Father Wilhelm, who gave me a very powerful God Slayer axe. Oh my god, that axe must be very, very powerful. No, but it's very, very godlike. And then after I took out this skilled skeleton man, I got Unbreaking 8. What will it take to find a dragon underground? If you couldn't tell, I was getting really thirsty in search of a dragon den. In my search, I found a broken nether portal, got the gold block, and it had a relic inside of the chest it had. It would become oh. handy in the nether. Fast forward to nighttime, and I was now in the swamp area, where I was able to trap this netherite stacked boss. Netherite, yes. Oh god, he's like super boss. I can choke him, right? Oh my god. No way. Trap. Wow. Wow, wow, wow. God, yeah, what a, what a brilliant morning. Now you want to go all extinct? That's what I thought. Okay, swamp is as flat as it gets. Day 70, I was getting very desperate with my tactic of trying to find a dragon's den on the surface, so the first ravine I saw, I decided to go down it and started swimming around, hoping a dragon would appear on my top map. Okay, mate, let me maybe go just deeper, you know? Maybe I'm the issue, and I just gotta go deeper. Hey, bedrock. And to my surprise, a dragon did appear on the map, but was it a dead 
or an alive one. Dragon, probably dead by the looks of it. No, it's only 31, 30 meters above. That has to be alive. And after a long search, there it was, a live and breathing dragon. <laughs> okay, we definitely found the spot. This is huge. I guess that was the issue this whole time. As long as we don't have any mobs spawning here. All right, all right, all right. Who's ready to kill a mother dragon? Oh, you see me. Oh my god, everything's gonna be falling. Stuck? Perfect. Oh, there, there it comes. Yep, 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 yep. Yep. Oh, you can pop one of these. Yep. Right in the heart. Like smog. <gasps> okay. The gods have spoketh. Please be a woman. It ended up being a pretty basic battle since the dragon was stuck in place since it was trying to fly and break free. But then came the moment of truth. Was this the female dragon who dropped me an egg? I didn't see if it dropped it. Yes, I see it. I see it. I see it. I see it. <gasps> okay, bang. Yes! Oh my gosh! Finally! At last I had my own dragon egg and got a whole lot of scales to help with my progression in getting dragon armor. We got ourselves the egg, a bronze one. May he grow big and mighty. I returned home and with the blood moon message, it wow, meant wow, the knight wow, was wow, young. Wow. I went through my quest rewards, got a diamond, some coal, and looked more into the process of creating dragon armor. So I started crafting my block of dragon skills with the ones I had. I have 19. Oh man, I think we gotta go dragon hunting a little more. <laughs> yeah, I can't even make that many. Wow. There was a lot of time to kill, so I decided to dig down. And I found one of those orbs that gives you uh, the indestructible enchant. And on day 71, I found this pretty unique pickup that mines in a 3x2, so pretty useful. That is fast and efficient. I was now pretty deep in the caves and was exploring the underwater portions, and it looks pretty cool, especially with the glowing squids lighting up a bit of the area. And in my exploration, I found a mob that I'd never seen before. A dragon centipede! Oh my god! Those are rare. That thing's huge. I didn't mean to have a golden apple. That was kind of dumb. Holy sh**. Thing's huge, but I killed it. I of course took it out easily. In real life though, that wouldn't be the same thing. Unless I had my bug spray on me. After taking out that centipede, that was a good time to head back home. Alright, you want a job? And I wanted to upgrade my butcher, so that's exactly what I did with whatever he had to offer. I finally crafted my first bit of dragon meal. That'll come handy once the little guy hatches. The growth hormone. Nice, so we got steroids for a dragon. I was in dire need of bones, so thankfully the haunted house that I moved into had quite a lot of them in the graves that were outside. And since it was already nighttime, I thought it would be a good time to take out the skeletons that were in the area for the bones. While doing so, I took out Mickey the Unholy. Mickey the Unholy. Oh, little diss at Disney, huh? Mickey ended up dropping me these very powerful leggings that upgrades your health by four, so pretty good drop. Day 72, I crafted some stone bricks, more dragon meal, and bought more pork chops for my butcher to create even more dragon meal. It was now time to get ready for the arrival of a baby dragon. So I crafted myself a dragon command staff, a dragon horn, a dragon flute, and I created some of the blocks I need to create the furnace that will be handy soon. Can you mix them? Do a little mixeroo? Yes, you can. Once it reached nighttime, I wanted to create a little habitat for the soon to come baby dragon. So I created this platform right beside my house, used my flint and steel, and placed the egg. Let there be a dragon. In the meantime, I created some basalt walls to create a little barrier, and all I could do was sit and watch because I was not going to let this dragon die. Some phantoms did come throughout the night. You're not coming for my dragon. Day 73, a dragon was born. Yes! Oh my gosh. Hey there, little guy. Is he mine? Oh, he is all right. Oh, he definitely can ride right on my shoulder. Nice. I fed my dragon as much dragon meal as I could. All right, this is 35 dragon meals, and he isn't even close to being full grown. <laughs> it looks like a stage two, though, right? Okay, can I storm in here? I'm actually, like, scared. 
Yes, okay, good. Good, 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 good. I did not want him to, like, be alone. Since I was out of dragon meal, I stocked up on more pork chops. And with the bones I had, created more dragon meal, which I fed right away to my dragon. Now let's go on foreseen territory and kill some dragons. That was what I was set out to do now. All I had to do was get more scales so I could get the last parts for the Dragon Furnace, or whatever the official name is. I crossed many oceans, but once the sun was beginning to set, I spotted this red fire dragon. Dragon! Yes! Hold on, let me get the flute. I wanna see what it does. That actually sounded so cool. Alright, time to wake up. which I took out and extracted its scales. Right beside the nest, I took out Father Yer the Scary, who gave me another powerful shield. What does this do? Plus 20 speed, not as good as mine. Good try though, good try. Also, the nighttime was a good time to hunt for more skeletons since I needed more bones for dragon meal. You've got a tarantula hawk doing its one-nighter with the spider. Ravine that leads us to a dragon. <laughs> Could not have asked for anything better. Alright, alright, buddy. Oh god, all the sand can fall. Let me just pop this to play it safe. He fly out? Oh my god. Alright, that sentry needs to chill. Climb out, climb out, climb out. Where's the flute? Just to play it safe. On the morning of day 74, I took out the gray fire dragon. I don't know how many. Oh, he killed it with a sword. Alright, uh, give me another egg. Why not? And a bunch of scales. Alright, so it was definitely a male. And unfortunately it was a male, so it did not drop an egg. But hey, we get what we get. 31 from a stage... I mean, I guess because of stage 4. But it was a male... A male cuck? Well, I guess we'll cross another ocean. That's going to work in finding us dragons. Oh, a sea town. Did no one live here? It's actually empty. All of this architecture for nothing. Dragon! Yes! Eat this. Oh. Uh... Like literally one shot. There we go. Not gonna lie, it may just be me, but it kind of pains me to kill the emerald colored dragons because they look so clean, but I needed the scales. You piece of sh look at you, marooned. Hello? Any dragons? Roar, please. I know that one isn't roaring. That's a really nice city. Ho ho ho! I don't know why I said that. During the nighttime, I added another trophy to the mutant creatures I had taken out. This time, it was the creeper. Defeat a mutant creeper. Dude, I swear, these guys are the biggest cocks of 2023. Okay. Right in front of me. Oh, there's Tornado Man. Before the day ended, I took out to Wilson and got some pretty good damn armor. There is a dragon. Fire protection. All right, that's that's kind of what we need right now. Oh, well, I hope he didn't burn everything else. And in the morning, I took out this dragon, got its scales, and continued my adventure. Where I found a lightning dragon, so quite rare. Unfortunately, it doesn't contribute to our cause. And I was very dumb and had a full inventory, so got no blood from it. I got none of its blood. Great. Oh, nice dragon. Wouldn't it be nice? To get some scales. Hello there. At nighttime, I took out another boss and it gave me a very good helmet. The helmet? Whoa. Max health. All right, we're in a little drought. No, really, just the fire ones, actually. Day 76. It was starting to feel like I was going on a fire dragon drought. Because remember this, I am able to run very, very fast. So to not spot one after quite a while is quite draining. <gasps> One thing I don't mess with, gators. Render in two caves, two overworld dragons right here. I'm not asking for much. Also, a good tactic for dragon hunting is check your map because you will render in some and you may not run into them. Well, if that isn't one. Bro, how did I miss that? Unfortunately, it doesn't contribute to the cause, but at least I got some electric dragon blood. Look at that lightning dragon blood. That looks so much cooler too. All right, I just want to feed my boy real quick. He's been stuck in that cage for a bit. I had a little pit stop and crafted some more dragon meal and fed it to my little guy. And now I was ready to take flight for the very first time. Oh my God. <laughs> All right, how do you fly? Some space. Oh, there we go. Oh my god, nah, we're, we're OP now. Dracar's bitch. 
<laughs> Dragon hunting would become a lot more easier now that I could cover ground faster. Yes! <laughs> uh, get down, get down, get down, get down. <gasps> also, I don't know how I didn't take any fall damage there. I'm trying to remember if I have feather falling on my boots. Or you just don't get damage if you dismount your dragon. But I ain't complaining. Kill. Thank you. So after taking out that dragon, I added a waystone in the middle of the desert. Because I wanted to offload all the things that were in my inventory and backpack. Also, with the scales I just got, I crafted more dragon forge fire bricks. The aperture. And the dragon forge fire core. After purchasing some more pork chops and fully upgrading my butcher, I went to sleep. Alright, we just need a few more dragon kills and then it's... It is all over! Day 77, I returned back to the desert I was at previously. That's a huge chunk. That's all I know. That is a good chunk. Let's just hope we don't get sniped from five miles away from a bunch of boats. Isn't that realistic, right? And sorry if this is getting really repetitive, but I, then I took out another dragon. Let's save the village! I once doomed a village, now it's time to save it. Dead. It just shows you how grindy it is to create the furnace in order to create dragon forge armor, but it grinds the grind. Soon after, I went underground and stumbled upon a boss oh. who was able to take out safely. Uh, what are the odds of that happen? <laughs> oh my god. I don't think I got anything significant from him, but what was even better was that I got one of the eyes I needed to reach the end. <gasps> yes, I needed this one. Thank you. That is actually... What are the odds? gods have provided. I decided to travel all night long, but did not find any more dragons. And on day 78, I found this weird looking mob that was hostile, so my dragon took care of it. What the hell is that thing? <laughs> it never stood a chance. Oh my god, did I see a camp? That needs some burning. I had some previous bad blood with pillagers, so I did what I had to do. Campfire, how ironic. Burn the archer towers. Oh, this is so satisfying. Jesus, I actually burnt down the whole town. You guys can go free. You see, I, I, I kept an eye out. Didn't kill the, the innocent animals. Great job, nameless dragon. I don't have a name for you yet. Was that another town to burn down? No, I'm kidding. Oh, there is actually another town to burn. I'll spare them, I'll spare them. Ah, at last. All right, let's go to the ground now. Relax, relax. After what felt like a long drought, I took out this gray dragon during the nighttime. A lot of food and not a lot of scales there. Yep, only five. Sick. And then I found where I think, in my opinion, a stage 5 dragon should be stationed. I mean, I literally just walked into the lands of Mordor. Right, I'm not even joking. Oh my god, I have not found a volcano yet. What the heck? Bro, there's no way there's not a dragon here. Come on now. This is the ideal spot for a fire dragon. And my middle finger holding down W is actually like hurting. I've been exploring for that long. <laughs> What is this place? Oh, it's another pillager town? Oh, there's a whole lot of wheat there. It'd be a shame if we were to get burnt. I really wanted to do more damage towards this pillager kingdom, but my dragon was actually taking quite a few hits. Okay, my dragon took some, some damage. In the morning of day 79, I saw a floating island that had a giant windmill slash silo. Some of you may get the reference of what I used to call this before, but I went up it and inside, I mean, it has very good loot if you're just starting your world. To me, it is just breadcrumbs. Feel good, yeah? All right, well, where's the TNT trap? Oh, there isn't one? Okay, that's pretty nice. At this point, this is garbage, but that's pretty nice. I found a red fire dragon in the wilderness, took him out, God, and right. was hoping this would be it. Is it the one to take us? Yes, no, uh, okay, that has to be enough, please. So I magic mirror back home, crafted what I had to craft. That's eight. I think we've done it, ladies and gentlemen. And I finally accomplished getting every single part you need to create the Dragon Forge Furnace. This actually goes hands down, it's the most grindiest thing I've done. I crafted the Dragon Forge Furnace. Now we got even a little more. Wait, did I create too many? Did I? Get oh, I know. I was gonna have extra anyways. So I honestly should save them, but that's okay. And is it looking lit? Oh my god, oh my god, oh my god. It's happening. Got some dragon meal for my dragon. All right, you got some work to do. And place the dragon blood and iron ingots to begin the process in getting one of the most get powerful armor you can get. And he's got, all right, world. everything's going along with it. 
Oh my god, it is happening. It takes quite a long time, so I went to sleep. And on day 80, I continued watching my dragon, breathing fire into the furnace. To kill time, I gathered some bones to create some dragon meal to feed to my dragon. I know we only have enough for armor, but... I mean, we can always get more later if we find one naturally. And at last, my dragon was done doing its job. All right, no more, no more. There's no need, there's no need. Oh my God, chest plate plus 12 armor. Oh my God. We got the leggings. We got the badass helmets. And then we got the boots with one spare. At last, I had full dragon steel armor after hours of grinding. All I know, is that I look like a freaking badass. Before seeing how cool the armor was, I had to do some skin customizations, but here's how it looked. There we go, that's better. Now it was time to splurge on myself. So I used four of my skill points and claimed a bunch of rewards. Here's how the pack opening went, I guess. Five levels, all right. Five levels. Iron ingot. 15 levels, Jesus. 10 levels? <laughs> yeah, I've never seen such a high level in such a short amount of time. But on day 81, I returned back to the nether. I now had my eyes set out on the nether eye. And it didn't take long to find that and another <gasps> relic. There it is. What is this? Rage Glove? Now, in order to obtain another eye, you have to find a very rare ore that is found in Bastion's But On my way there, I had my fair share of adventure. Are these guys good? Okay, what the heck is this? Okay, they should be neutral to me, but I'm gonna have to kill them all. I took them out to all of these since, at first, they gave me the pass and thought I was valid since I had a Bastion ring on. And one of them had poison, so they just kind of made everyone half a heart. There were some piglins that were still inside, it took them out. Not even the younglings survived. And I found some pretty cool stuff in the chest it had to offer. Okay, another Bastion ring. I arrived at the Bastion and took out as many piglins as I could. And after some time of searching, it finally hit me that I found one of the four ores I needed to create the next eye. <gasps> and crystal ore! However, what's a trip to the Bastion without taking their gold supply, which is exactly what I did. And after a long time of searching, I found another piece of end crystal ore. Day 82, I took out this straddle guy who throws little tadpoles at you. Kind of weird. And then this demon who came from behind could have possibly killed me. And thankfully on the way to the next bastion, I found a little foresty area that had a little piglin camp. And they had set up some wither skeleton heads, which would become useful very soon. In the chest that they have in there, it has a bunch of enchants on the swords. However, they're on stone ones, but at least it had blocks of gold. I'm glad they updated their sound. They used to sound like a, a dying grandpa. Not even joking, that's how they used to sound like, so it was honestly quite shocking to hear that noise instead. Once I arrived at the next bastion, I took the gold, and after some time of searching, I found one piece of end crystal ore. Fortunately, I only found one there, so I had to find myself another bastion, and on day 83, that is exactly what I did. I infiltrated the bastion, and this time took a peek at the chest that were there, which had some golden carrots and blocks of gold. Eventually, I found this little ship in the middle of the bastion, which I thought was pretty cool since it shoots out fireworks. And inside of it had also pretty unique loot. And it was kind of meant for me to be down there because then I spotted the last bit I needed. <gasps> yes! Oh my god. After mining it out, I magic mirrored back home and went to sleep. Day 84. I returned back to the nether because I needed one more wither skeleton head. In the meantime, I also looked through the chest that I missed, which had a lot of replica loot, however, still good. I was taking out wither skeletons for quite a while in that area, so without any luck and getting a drop. So I decided to journey to a different area in the nether to hopefully find a more populated area of wither skeletons. On my way there, I found some ancient debris for the first time. Whoa. And then I found this very unique mob. What the hell is that? A purger? 
Oh my god, mom's spaghetti. Rowing out M&M bars before you die. It's one way to go out. So some pretty cool wild animal finds, but I found this wither skeleton riding a withered horse, it seems like. And then I saw from a distance what I thought was a beaver, but it's just this animal called Bucky. And I have no idea what the hell it's doing in the nether. What is that, a beaver? All right, let's just find a soul sand valley. I don't know why I haven't done that. Day 85. I arrived to a soul sand valley with no luck at all, so I magic mirrored back home. I claimed a relic reward, and now all I could do was sit and watch in the nether fortress, hoping for some wither skeletons to spawn. And at last, I took one out, who gave me the drop. I need it. Yes! So I magic mirrored back home, went to sleep, and on day 86, I decided to switch out my dragon steel armor. One, I didn't really want it to lose its durability before getting it enchanted, and number two, the armor I had previously on is technically better because of the amount of hearts I am given. I journeyed far away from my home and dug down and found the perfect spot to have this boss battle, which was in this pocket of unique stones and ores. I built the wither and at this point, it was quite an easy battle and I got just what I wanted, the wither eye. That was pretty easy. Defeat the wither and I got two wither eyes, nice. And another star. I magic mirrored back home, went to sleep, and on day 87, okay. I crafted myself the end crystal eye. All right, we officially have every single eye. I had some rewards to claim, so I got a diamond, gold ingots, fire resistance, and fiery torches. Now I gotta get all the eyes in one chest because I don't know where the hell every single one of them is. Oh my, all right, well, we're ready for it, aren't we? It's been a while since I last fed my dragon, so I gave it seven dragon meal. Stage four now, beautiful. And then I had another reward opening since I missed some, and man, I think officially at this point, I've never reached this high of a level. I was now in search of that orb type ore, if that makes any sense, the one that can give you XP or if you combine it with the Stellarite piece and four of its own kinds, you can get undestructible on any item you have. So I had to go back into the mines to do this. While there, I find myself another wither skeleton head and I would begin finding the orb that I needed. I also found the much rarer one that explodes once it's mined. <gasps> oh, so it blows up. That's why it says be careful. Before the day ended, I found myself another orb, and on day 88, my search continued. Where I continued being successful finding more expetrified orb. However, what's a trip underground without running into a boss battle? Oh god, there's a sword. Now this guy gave me some of the most powerful pants I have ever seen. Okay. Oh my god. After searching for more orbs, I found another boss battle who gave me a very powerful helmet. One who gave me nearly 5 plus max health. And in its chambers, there was another expetrified orb. Day 89, I was still in the mine searching for more orbs. And continued being successful, I then found myself another boss who didn't give me the best boots. Mm. That's pretty shit. And then I found these leggings inside of a chest, which are honestly pretty good. The fact that they're not from a boss. Well, that's not bad. After finding myself some more orbs, I decided it was a good time to magic mirror back home and go to sleep. Day 90, we got 10 days to prepare. My reward for finding a Stella Rytor was the diamond, and I created the Eternal Stella. Now I had a lot of debating as to what I wanted to add Indestructible to, and I wanted to add it to my bow, but unfortunately, it was not compatible. I think it's because it has Unbreaking on it and Infinity, I'm not sure, but it was quite a letdown since this bow is very powerful and I wanted to save it. Now I had some choice rewards from very early on, and this whole time, those bosses I've been taking out well they're apotheotic bosses sorry if i butchered the name there i was just so scared to spawn them in thinking it would be like a cthulhu type boss but hey good to learn now than never so before summoning it i went to sleep and on day 91 i spawned earl in which of course was a, another easy fight wow okay sick bro give me more of those Papa the Misunderstood was the next in line on the chopping block, who gave me some crazy boots. Oh my god. <laughs> Those are some crazy enchants. Unfortunately, not better than the ones I have. And the last boss I took out was the zombie, but didn't get anything good from it. So, I wanted a lot more bones, because what was really left was to fully grow my dragon so i pinged a skeleton dungeon and dug my way down until i found it eventually a bone to pick within this area there were a 
bunch of chests with a lot of loot. To be honest, the loot I was the happiest to see were the bones inside the chests. After a full day of slaying skeletons, I took a nap in there. And on day 92, I continued my pillaging of this area. The chests, once again, weren't bad at all. I got an enchanted golden apple in one of them, so who the hell is going to complain about that? And basically, these days were just straight up skeleton grinding, getting as many bones as you can. At one point, I wandered a bit off to the side, and here's what happened. <gasps> Alright, there are tons of mobs. After clearing the mobs in that area, I went to sleep. And on day 93, I once more continued with my skeleton grind. And actually found myself another orb within the walls. And at last, I felt like I had collected enough bones. So I added a waystone to this skeleton dungeon. And let's go back home for free. And went back home to create a lot of dragon meal. Now, it was time to turn my dragon into the fully grown beast he was meant to become. And I thought my dragon was fully grown at this point, so I took a little flight with him. Then I realized, no, he's a stage 4, so I took him back out, and now my dragon was basically bigger than my house. Stage 4 still? Yep, that is 100%. He's literally bigger than my house. Afterwards, I would go to sleep. Alright, I think I'm actually gonna start building stuff for the first time. But we definitely need a storage house, because what I have going on is just disgusting yeah it was about time to start organizing everything i have been getting throughout this whole 100 days so on day 94 i collected some birch and cherry logs and within the hill right beside my house i created these stairs going down to create what will become my storage room i used cherry and birch planks to create this nice little pattern and did this for the whole day until it was time to go to sleep all right, back to work, boy. Honestly, we could add the chests now and the decorations later. Day 95, I got myself some more cherry logs and realized you can't make any colorful chests for whatever reason. What? Now we turn into oak? So I thought it was maybe just that type of wood. So I got myself some saplings for my chest, planted them, and then realized there's not that much time. So I'll just settle with some birch chests. Screw it, let's just use birch. It's not like I have much time anyways. But lo and behold, not even the birch planks worked. All right. What the hell? Dude, I, I'm so confused right now. All right, regular chests it is. I settled with the regular looking chests and started to install them. Damn, never knew Minecraft would hold me back artistically. At least I could make the birch signs, I guess. Oh, I can make birch signs, look at that. I know this looks like crap. It's not what I envisioned. God, this is so bad. We'll go to sleep to sleep on it. Day 96, I started the transfer process of taking everything from my house into the storage room. I started labeling a lot of the chests and putting them in their respective spots. All the back and forth though prompted me to make that bridge. Hey, uh, through this trip I'm making a bridge. It's actually annoying going back and forth. So after a full day of going back and forth on day 97, I made some birch bridges. And let me tell you, the mechanics with these things are absolutely dumb. Yes, you can make it wider. Beautiful. The hell? What am I supposed to do? Bro, what the hell is this? At the time, I settled with the skinny bridge, but I didn't like how thin it was, so I added some more girth to it, which is what I did for the rest of the day. And on day 98, I finished up the bridge and then figured out a way to make its little entrance so I could actually go through it. I guess that works. I found the strategy. All right, that works. I then added some bridge supports to add a little more depth to the bridge and then realized I misaligned the whole bridge. No, I built it one to the- ugh. Okay, we'll deal with this another day, if you guys want to. After I transferred more things, I thought it was now time to get ready to make my journey to the portal. So, I gathered up the eyes and would witness my last sunset at home. You could say all the previous days were just a bunch of the filler episodes in an anime, but hey, it led up to the inevitable end, which is literally where we were heading to. Still haven't given my dragon a name. I guess the comments will play a huge role, so... Comment down below what I should name my dragon. Day 99, I hopped on my dragon and would begin to make my way towards the portal. What is that thing? On the way there, I found some flying manatee looking creatures that gave you strength when you went nearby them. So I thought that was pretty cool. Also a dragon spotted us and started to target me, but I didn't care much for it and kept on flying. And as soon as I got close to the city, well, my game crashed and here's how things turned out when I logged back in. But my ass just loaded back in, I fell all the way down by my dragon, and I'm being attacked by a dragon. Great. 
Obviously the dragon fight was no issue, but I was left wondering where my dragon went. And where the hell is my dragon? Nowhere to be found. Oh! <laughs> Alright, I see you, man. What the hell is that gator doing here? Man's in the wrong place. I put my dragon back into its horn, climbed up the walls of the city, and made my way into the portal room. Yeah, hey, here's what I'm worried about. Is there supposed to be lava? Guess I'm about to find out. I would begin placing each eye, one by one. All of the adventures we have gone through has led up to this very moment. The question is, would the portal open? Oh man, god, I don't know why I'm nervous. This has been quite the adventure. Let's do this. Okay, we are as far away as possible. Brilliant. We're just gonna speed run our build across, just like this. Yep, don't mind me. Definitely not sweating from my palms. Just get me in here, get me in here. Here we are. Let's go to work. Are ready? Finally, all of a sudden Envale is looking a lot more attractive. Nice. Nice. No, my bad. What am I doing? I. And I forgot to put the waystone. Oh god, okay, we're flying. Oh, that's why we went there on day 99. One of the biggest L misclicks I've ever done in my life. What a way to kill the momentum. But anyways, I mounted my dragon once more and flew all the way back to hop right back to where we left off. I added a waystone and resumed my campaign. Nice. This is healing. Okay, is that one still? Nice. Ooh. No, my leggings broke! Damn it. Is he being healed anymore? I can't tell. Wait, he's being healed. No, don't tell me I have to take out that one. Okay, let's get on top of another tower, maybe? Looks like that ain't happening. This dragon time is in. That was a play and a half. Wakey, wakey. Break that. Come on. Dragon, dragon violence. I can see it now. We exposed it. Good job, dragon. Yes! Oh my god. What a shot. Oh my god, I'm a sniper. One more, one more. Yes! I'm gonna save all the XP. Voila, really good old trick. Loop. The next generation. I guess it's time to go back home. What's the key? How do you get out of this? Oh, there we go. Why did I just take so much damage for doing that? Well, it is the morning now, so that means it is day 100. Now, although the Ender Dragon was slayed, was there truly peace brought within the realm? Well, I guess that's a story for another time. But anyways, thank you so much for watching this video. I put a lot of time and effort into creating these and I hope you're entertained. So if you were, please like and subscribe. It helps me out a lot and drop a comment and 
what you want to see next. I extremely severely apologize for the time it took to make this video and I hope it will never happen again but obviously that's on me. Anyways I appreciate your patience and see you next time. Wow look at these beautiful names it's almost like they're members of the channel and you get your name featured at the end of the video which is why you should consider becoming a member to further support me. Eh, but anyways, if you're bored, check out these other videos. I promise you'll be entertained. I guess that's the end of the voiceover. Mm-hmm. <laughs>